internet right now, Kale? Is that what's going on? Oh, we are. What is everybody? Welcome to the pregame show. <laughs> Live from the Toyota Lounge and Studio and presented as always by Bet365. <laughs> Never ordinary. We're later on in the show. That ma- Wait a second. D-Line has to give us bets tonight? I just did that math myself right now. Oh, no. <laughs> well, listen. Hey, guys. I hit at a... I'm like a 75% depth. Okay, that's not bad. That's, that's pretty bad. good. That's pretty good. I'm like a 4% That's better personally. than 100% me, for sure. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's true. definitely true. It's also Miller time, fellas. Oh, and yes, good. it is Murray time on top of being Miller time. Murray. Presented by, of course, Miller Lite. Uh, on today's show... We're going to ask, how big is it? <laughs> what the? <laughs> game? For Jokic, he said very small. For Ant, he said enormous. That's not what I would have imagined. <laughs> so we're going <laughs> to debate whose answer was more real. We're also going to ask, are the Timberwolves better with Carl Anthony Towns, better without him, because he's going to be coming back? Could that throw things off? He's not coming back tonight, but the Nuggets might face the Wolves again here in a couple weeks. So we'll debate that. And, of course, we'll make our bets. To help me, though, I brought the homie. Brenda Vogt. What is up? You already stepped on the game notes, man, with the Jamal reveal, but that's fine. There are other reveals to come. <laughs> he played last night but wasn't playing tonight. Like, come on, I know, man. I know, I know. Can you imagine how much we would, like, be pissed about that? A couple of Australians downstairs asked us how we feel about the game. I was very excited to reveal the Smugget shirt. I Hell yeah. I couldn't wait for this one, fellas. Couldn't wait. I was wearing black camouflage so I could just fade into the darkness. So <laughs> just different levels of... Uh, so that's Comfort. how D-Line's doing, in case anybody was wondering. It's, uh, that's where he's at. Uh, of course, rounding out the show, D-Line Co. That's right, guys. Uh, I'm ready to watch a very meaningful basketball game that I hope that the Denver Nuggets feel the same about it that I do. It's not lost on me that uh, Game 82 is this year Game 80. Yeah. yeah I, it's a little lost on me because I didn't know the math. But it's like Game 80. Two. <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> like game 82. This is a very meaningful game. The stakes are lower in some ways, higher in others. I'm very excited. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Uh, Harrison is at the arena where he will be reporting live after the game. And Superstar Dev is in Minneapolis. Yeah, it's really weird, actually. That doesn't make sense. Is Tim Conley trying to steal him? Did he think the game was in Minneapolis? I was thinking about that, too. Just <laughs> that actually be hilarious. <laughs> All right, let's hit to the game notes. What do we got? Well, how about the Denver Nuggets? Fellas, that injury report looked a little full. You may have seen names such as Aaron Gordon, Jokic, Jamal Murray, KCP. They're all ready to go. They are all ready to play, and they will play tonight, the Denver Nuggets. I kind of feel like the Nuggets have had this plan all along. Seems how it's playing out. <laughs> they, uh, they're playing. They're, are they going for it? TBD. Minnesota Timberwolves on the other side of things. Carl Anthony Towns. Might he play in this game? Might he make his return? No, actually. He was officially ruled out. We know what's at stake here. If the Nuggets lose, that's bye-bye one seed or more or less. I mean, the Wolves are going to have this tiebreaker here so because they'll have a better division record. I, and also, if they just win, they'd have they'll a better They'll have a better record so, and a better so that's the, the first tiebreaker is having a better record. So step one here <laughs> is going ahead and, and, and winning this game. Right, and so it's a big one, and Michael Malone downplayed it, actually. Downplayed it right away. He said, I have a different perspective on this one, probably, than everyone else in the room to the media members, saying he understands why this is such a big deal to people in our position, but to him, it's one of three, three games left here. Do the Nuggets, on honest question, do they not want it? We'll answer that. We'll ask that here in a second. I think that's just coach speech, man. I think the fact that all these guys are playing tells us what we're looking for in terms of do they want it. Then he did get a little reflective on what he's proud of this season. The fact that we didn't, uh, he said, this is a quote now, quote, the fact that we didn't rest on last year, that we challenged ourselves to be even better. The fact that we have, I think, 55 wins with three games to go in an even deeper and more talented Western Conference. Uh, when you add to the fact that we tried to go young this year, for us to be able to do that after winning a championship is, I think, incredible. I think our players and our coaching staff and I have a great, uh, I think our players and our coaching staff, and I have a great coaching staff, I think those guys all deserve a ton of credit because that's your fear going into this year. You won a championship, your first in franchise history. Do you come up for air? Do you exhale? Do you think that you've done something and relax? I haven't seen that from our guys. Obviously, there are ebbs and flows to every season, but for us to be where we are, again, you don't have Bruce Brown. You don't have Jeff Green. The development of our young players and our veterans continuing to get better. I think these guys deserve a ton of credit. 
I like that little shout out to the coaching staff and everybody. I kind of like it. Those are the guys you don't hear from or see or, or stuff, so I, I like it. Again, they are on pace to have the best record of all time for the Nuggets. It's worth mentioning. Are they on pace? That we'd have to win I don't know what on games. pace means, but yeah. they, they can it do it. It is possible. I think they're behind pace. Well, but, but they, if they, if they win, win the next tonight, three games, they will. But they, two of these games are fake games, and this is a real yeah. game. By the way, just to clean up that tiebreaker stuff, by the way, it actually doesn't matter because even if the Nuggets win, it's 2-2, two to two, but the Wolves will finish with a better division record. So you need to finish with a better record than the Wolves. Which tonight would help a lot. One is tonight. It's a head-to-head game against the Wolves. We figured it out together. Um, it's going to be an interesting one. You know, you can't help but ask yourself. It reminds you a little bit of Game 82, as you mentioned. I will say that Game 82 felt significantly bigger because making the playoffs or not versus one seed or not, those are different stakes. And also Denver at that time, you were so desperate for that validation. That game felt so, so important. Both teams, by the way, it just felt so big. Um, so this one to me just definitely doesn't carry quite that same weight. But at the same time... I do think that there is some value in them uh, kind of going out tonight. Like, just what are your expectations, you know, from this game? Well, my expectations are that I, I believe that Michael Malone sees this as a prelude to the playoffs, as as, as everyone should, because they really want to. They don't really have any more tests before the playoffs. This is a good opportunity to fully reintegrate Jamal into a fully operational battle system or battle uh, whatever that Star Wars quote is but like Aaron Gordon is back they have the whole team together they can kind of like go out and execute at a high level against a worthy opponent they don't get that over the next two it's going to be you know like they're going to be sort of like doing a uh, I don't know like a play a, a run through of a play and then the playoffs start so I think that it would be foolish not to take this as most as seriously as possible just really give the team a a true tune-up and it's not it's not a a big deal or it's not not a big deal to have the one seat or not have the one seat it's a big deal man like it's you know it really only comes into play if you then face the team that would be the one seed the wolves or i guess the the thunder but like it means something the denver nuggets benefited from it greatly last year and there's really only one goal this year, and that's to repeat. So you want to give yourself every advantage. Yeah. Pause, because we'll get to, to you here in just a second. We have a video, though. You guys might enjoy this. This is a little behind the scenes that uh, RG captured. You know Monte Morris, our old friend? Oh, He's man. on the squad. Well, they was wrong Yoke squad. Yoke had some words for him. Hey, Monte, you, you made that. With me, you made that. Uh, Maybe you need me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. He I was didn't. saying, Monte, Monte, that he misses a shot. And he says, you used to make those when I throw them to you. I like, can't make them without me, motherfucker, or something like that. So, uh, you never, like, that was like a candid moment. RG doing a good job of being a little covert operative there. <laughs> being a creep. Uh, of being a little bit of a creep. But I, it's kind of fun. Like, we don't always get that side of Yoke, and it's kind of fun to see him. Everybody loves Monte, man. I, I think Yoke has a lot more of that as a teammate in him than we maybe get to see, you know. He's... He's a bit of a pet, like he's a little brother. And I think even as he gets serious, that never goes away. He yeah. likes to like kind of needle guys and be a bit of a pest. And obviously everyone loves Monte, still does. Uh, and then, man, I almost forget that he's on that team. Not, not forget, but just as we look at this matchup, you're, you're like, there's just another layer to it of of a thing that, that's, as you mentioned it earlier, I kind of realized these teams aren't on parallel tracks, but there's something you can trace all the way back to 82. And it's kind of crazy for now Monte, a former Mr. Nugget, to be trying to help the Wolves turn a corner. We're debating if this is a big game for us. I guarantee you there's something oh, in the air in Minnesota tonight. There's something in oh, the air. Oh, it means those more to them for bars. sure. But that's cool, man. Yeah. Like that's The Nuggets have been in that spot, the measuring stick games. And so I hope, I hope it happens naturally for Denver. Like, hey, these guys have always played us hard. They take pride in beating us. This is a big game. We know the championship matters more, but like they're going to push us. Let's let's go win this game at home. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think absolutely for sure. Um, have you guys, by the way, seen the ownership situation there? Did you see the latest report that Woj shared today, a sourced report? that Because you're all wondering what's going on with this Minnesota sale. Now Mark Laurie and them fighting with Glenn Taylor. He said, she said, well, a report came out tonight that Woj reported on that said, yeah, Glenn Taylor heard them talking about wanting to cut costs 
and blow up this roster or at least diminish it because it was such an ex it's a pricey roster. And allegedly, Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez are a little tight. Their belt's a little tight right now. Their plan is to blow this team up or at least to cut maybe a Nas Reed, maybe a Carl Anthony Towns, not to replace them, but just as like, this team's too expensive, man. And Glenn Taylor is like, no, he, I, I mean, this is billionaires trying to put out their own narratives and stuff, I'm sure a little bit. But hey, man, maybe there is something too. Like these, Bro, these clowns are, we'll finally have a good team and these clowns want to get rid of it. If that's true, I hope that Alex Rodriguez and Mark Lurie never own a team. What well, are you of doing? Course. It, that's disgusting. If they don't own this, this team, the, they're never going to own a team. I'm, I'm hearing this for the first time. That disgusts me that they want to come in and immediately gut a team that's like finally I, having. I, I would imagine that this is the first of many contradicting yeah. reports yeah. in terms of framing that we're about to get. But it would actually make sense because this is coming out of nowhere. Like they had what? a deal in place. Tim Connolly was a huge benefactor. It seemingly uh, comes out of nowhere. I mean, just hearing that, like all of a sudden like puts on a light in my head that's unreal i hope that that's not the case that's disgusting i think vote i i think i said with vote here it's not coming out of nowhere you have two groups warring over you know this team and if you're glenn taylor this is the exact move of course you know those guys were talking about cutting salary I, i'm gonna I, pay the luxury you tax know, like, you know me finally. i've always spent money on the Timberwolves. i've always nah. told you guys if we could just Get the best record out west. I would pay yeah. the luxury tax. So to me, it does feel like, and I'm with, I'm with. I, now I want to see what's Mark Laurie's next card. What is Alex Rodriguez? What is it? Well, Glenn Taylor. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I they start getting political at Glenn yeah, yeah, Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit old at this point, by the way. But if you are looking for the other side of the fence, our guy Dane Moore had Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez on yeah. his podcast uh, about right, 10, five, 11 days ago. Yeah. No, it was five minutes after coming on our our show and saying. I'm so tired of I talking about to ownership. Focus on the basketball. I noticed that too. I noticed that. <laughs> then as he gets well. a call. He's walking out of the bar. It's Alex Rodriguez. It's Alex like, Rodriguez. Can I hey come man, on your I'd show. Like to, but for what it's worth, if you wanted to hear their side of things, about 11 days old now. Our guy Dane, the Dane Moore Show. That's available. There you go. All right, guys. Time for Circle K. Who's gonna eat tonight? That's the big question. Uh, vote. You never get to go first. You went first last time. D-Line, you never get to go first. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Hey, you can have it, dude. I, I, I didn't even... You went last last time, and it saved you. Christian Brown ended up eating. I, no, I went for Michael Porter Jr. And he oh, only, like, he just, you? like, snacked. <laughs> he did snack. All right, who's going to eat tonight? <laughs> oh, shoot. I really should have thought about who I was going to have eat before I made a big stink. Um, brother, I got 47. Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic versus Rudy Gobert. You really think game. so? Yes. Okay. You don't think so? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that, uh, you know, based on the trajectory of things, I would go Jamal Murray. But Jamal Murray is going up against one of his uh, foils in Nikhil Alexander-Walker. And Jaden McDaniels first. And Jaden McDaniels. So, it, you know, that means that the scoring will probably have to fall on somebody with big, broad shoulders that's not afraid to do it and can do it against whoever he wants, whenever he wants, in a big game always. Yes, Nikola Jokic is going to eat. All right, he's off the board. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're right, by the way, because the Nuggets usually win when Jokic Dude, eats. Brother, I got 47. By the way, what is, what is Jokic eating? Just establish it. I don't want this 28, 13, and he's 6. Eating, he's having uh, certain K peach rings, just like the rest of us. What is he? What does that line look like? Uh, it, he, it means he hits his over, which is over 26 and a half points. Okay. Uh, it means that he is either has a sambor or triple double. Okay, all right, that's that's fair. That's fair. Twenty four points for Michael Porter Jr. Let's go. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. What a bizarre. Why? Lead. Because I'm very hopeful. That's why. Because it's eight <laughs> three. I would love for it to happen, and I will say this: I, my heart really wants to say Jamal right now because of the moment. When looking at the matchup, I kind of go: Is this the matchup Jamal's always the best in, or on paper the best in? I'm a little hesitant. My heart does say Jamal. So what am I going to do? Just zag entirely and say MPJ because I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm going to go Jamal. Really? I'm going to go Jamal. I was thinking about it, as I said. I feel like you stole my answer, honestly. I, 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 heard, two you, answers. I heard you thinking about it, and that's, <laughs> and that's why I stole it. I'm going to go to Jamal. I don't feel 100% great about it, but I want to believe. I want to believe. I love that, yeah. This is as close to a playoff game. As you can get. This is it. So if he treats it like a playoff game, we get playoff Murray. Playoff Murray cooks. Tonight could be a nice moment for him to send a message, especially to Jaden McDaniels, and just be like, come on, man. Absolutely cook. Seal it up. Get that home crowd going. And by the way, last night, Murray Murray played that game last night like it was a tune-up for tonight. 
I can't imagine he used everything he had last night just to be Utah. I think it was a tune-up for tonight. I think he's focused. I think he's ready. I think that you know they played it safe with him over the stretch to make sure he's fresh. Same with Aaron Gordon. Not surprised those guys are both back tonight. I think Murray gives us a show. Which brings us to our next topic. How big is it? Because <laughs> if we pull up these quotes here, Kale, just last night. Nobody, nobody take a screenshot of this, by the way. We cannot yeah. get aggregated <laughs> on the internet for this again. Uh, last night, Anthony Edwards on the showdown with the Nuggets tomorrow night. He says, I think everyone knows what is at stake. I don't even need to talk about how big it is. Everybody knows. So according to Ant, how big is it? Everybody already knows. It's huge. <laughs> But, all right, let's go to Jokic now. Does Jokic think, let's ask Jokic, how big is it? He says, I don't think it's a, a really big game. Yes, we're going to go out there and play to win the game, of course. But I think people are just making their stories that it's a big game. Hopefully it's going to be interesting. Nobody asked Jamal this, right? Nobody asked Jamal, no. Oh, I think after you get that answer, you're like, all right. What a Jokic answer, by the way. So how do you break this down? Is it a big game? Is it not a big game? Is Jokic being coy? What's going on? I think Jokic is kind of... Always hesitant to call any one game in front of them yeah. a big game, honestly. Uh, maybe there's a bit of coyness or calculation in that. I just think that's his disposition in this very specific context. I also think one of these teams has won a title. And one of these teams is, and I don't really mean that with any, like, spice or, or anything. Just, not, yeah, it's not ring cultures. No, it's just the difference. Yep. It's just the difference. And, like, and I, the Wolves should view this as a huge game, by the way. The Wolves should. Like this on our show, we're going. Do they need the one seed? How hard do they go for it? There's some counter arguments. Devil's advocate. If we're doing a Wolves show, to me, there's no debate. Like they should want this. Yeah. This, is a, this is a huge game for them. I like that it feels that way about Denver and about Jokic, but I also think Denver has, I guess, what like the the literally wiser perspective, having been through it and gotten on the other side and been to the promised land. So you don't think it's that big of a game? Like to you, you're just like ah, one seed, three seed. I mean, come on. I think it's. As far as what we get in front of us doing the, this show 82 times a year, 82 times a game, a year, it's a huge game. It's a huge game. But the Denver Nuggets can lose this game and we'll wake up in 48 hours and honestly be just as excited for the playoffs. I don't know if Wolves fans would feel that way. It's just different. And the Wolves need that one seed. I don't know if Denver needs it. Yeah. So it's a big game. But once you've won a title, you sort of have this as a fan base, you have this emotional kind of insurance of, well, we know they can get it done when it matters most. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of split on that. I mean, I couldn't agree more it, it, because it's the stakes are high, but they're fake high because, the, you know, if they lose, it doesn't mean anything, really. It just is a bummer. Um, but it is going to feel like a little bit like our guys didn't come through when the moment was big going into the playoffs, even though... There is in the back of everyone's head that it's not actually a big game because, you know, like the in the worst case scenario, it results in them being the three seed, which there have been champions to come out of the three seed. It's not unheard of that uh, a team would do that. Um, but it's just, you know, like this is big. The, the players are right around the corner um, and you want to see them come out and give it the old college try here and you want to see them perform in the way that we all assume they're going to when the playoffs come and the flip or they can flip the switch again. We're, you know, we're waiting on the switch flip. Like again, we're kind of in this position, just kind of how the, the, uh, the season has played out with injuries and this, that, or the other, like they've looked good, but they haven't looked like peak nuggets. And this is a real opportunity to, to display it. Um, so it's, you know, it's like average, it's like five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> It's five and a half. Yeah. That was a jury. That was a jury. I think this is wow. <laughs> pretty average. A pretty average game. I honestly have. I've seen bigger. <laughs> I, I know I've, I've seen, seen a nine. The, it's, the, it's, the, it's the exact it's average for an American <laughs> game. Some people say five and a half is ideal. Yeah, so, it's, it's perfect, really. Um, all right. <laughs> This is so dumb. <laughs> yeah, I think it's both <laughs> big and small. You guys are my bosses, both of you, literally. We're children. We're just giant children. We're it's not, terrible. We're not, if it makes you feel better when the network is shut down tonight, no, no one will be your boss. No, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. true. That'll be true. That'll feel great. Um, I think it's both true and not true that this game is big. Um, here's the thing. The Nuggets one seed, three seed. The Nuggets genuinely <laughs> don't seem to care that much about it. KCP will say something about it every now and then. Jamal will say something about it. 
But I don't think that they have treated this portion of the season like it's the most important thing. You could tell when a team is gunning for a number one seed. The Nuggets have not been doing that. It is there for the taking. But here's why I think it is a big game. The Nuggets lost to the Timberwolves the other night. Yep. And after the game, Jaden McDaniels said, this is a great matchup for us. They're a good team, but you know right. what? We like this matchup. We feel right. good. This team's good, but they're like not that good. And I think Minnesota genuinely feels that way about Denver. They feel like, hey, they got us last year. We were shorthanded. We're, they're the one team in the NBA that just seems like they are not scared of the Nuggets. Yeah, I agree. And they're out there saying this is a big game and it means something to them. You smack them or even just get a win and control it. I yes. do feel like it puts... No matter what you say, it puts a little more doubt in their mind. I don't think it does there. I don't think they're going to be shaking in their boots if they match up in a playoff series. But I do think it's a nice message of, you guys realize you beat us in January, you beat us in November, and you beat us once when we were resting AG and everything else. But when it matters, we smack you. And don't get it twisted and put that doubt in their mind. Yeah. And I think that is what makes tonight big. So you need, to me, I would love the Nuggets to go out and win this one for that reason more than anything else. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I mean, this is, again, like we're, we are shifting into the, into the real season here. And you want people to be going in with an appropriate level of confidence, particularly when they're thinking about the reigning champs. Yeah. So I agree. That's what I think. We'll ask a quick question here. We don't have to linger on it too long. But Carl Anthony Towns, you know, is coming back. He might be back on Friday when they play again. He might be back on Sunday, the last game of the regular season, but certainly looks like he'll want to play when the playoffs begin. But here's the thing. They've been pretty good without him. They were good with him. They've been pretty good without him. Put yourself in their shoes for a second vote. A major piece coming back with two games to go after missing in a very extended period of time. Is there any chance that that can screw things up for Minnesota. They're not a surefire thing in the playoffs. To some extent, for sure. I mean, I remember we had those conversations about Jamal Murray, and he yeah. ultimately didn't come back. And I think that was part of his fear, by the way, was coming back and being less than and being disruptive. But Towns is not Jamal. You know what I mean? Like, not even talking talent, just what they mean to their respective teams. Jamal completes the Nuggets. Yeah. Towns yeah. is like, kind of has to fit in a little bit. I mean, people in our position with shows like ours will spend all year kind of half throwing out, are they better without him? And that's, but I don't really think that could ever be your perspective as a team that has him. You just, he is talented. He makes that much money. He has been around the team that long. I think you have to feel like you're at your best with him on the floor. But yeah, as a fan, I'm, I'm prepared for maybe at least a little rust and not, not just individually, but just the five starters how they play together you know guys have gotten used to a certain rotation a certain pattern a certain rhythm and it's always tough to reintroduce a huge piece and cat <clears throat> not jamal is a huge piece there's there's no doubt about it is there a chance though d-line that this team maybe they're the one seed maybe they're the two seed whatever it is you get into the playoffs and game number one they lose Carlton town's a minus 20 completely disrupts the rhythm and it's like now we worked all year to have home court advantage and we lost it game one round one is it possible you could see that scenario yes definitely i mean when you have two centers on the court it is a completely different play style than what they're typically yeah. uh you know when what they've had to rediscover with him off it's like they have almost like a novelty sort of lineup that they have to sort of figure out what that does with rudy gobert they have a lot of like much more complex defensive schemes that they're trying to work with um it's absolutely the case although i mean i would you know if i were a fan of the minnesota timberwolves and that happened i would still want them to stick with it i think that that ultimately is their most dangerous form it just but there is a a, a moment where you have i mean there, it does take time to sort of like switch gears and find the rhythm again the one thing that they have going for them is that he was with them for a really they had a long time to do, originally develop that rhythm i don't think it would take that long to find again i think he's more analogous almost to a michael porter or something and not even this year where the nuggets won a title with porter and everything else i think a porter missed 30 games and came back the nuggets now would absorb him yeah way more naturally but if you think back maybe a year ago and if he would have missed half a season and come back, you'd have been like, yeah, he's not fully ingrained, right. though. And he's missed some time. Sure. It's like when, and I think, I think it would have been more analogous to that. And you would have looked at it and said, of course, you're going to play him. Of course, you're going to bring him back. But I don't know, man. This team's made a lot of progress throughout the year, and he has not been a part of that. I just view that as a weird curveball that the Timberwolves are going to have to deal with, unfortunately. I actually, can I say something? They're a rival. 
I kind of, I, I don't mind the Timberwolves right now. I'll probably hate them if we play them in a playoff series. Oh, you series will this year, for sure. hate them. But Everyone I, likes Ant right now. Prepare to hate Ant. It's not even the team. I'm more talking about the fan base because I always feel for these mid, middle of the country teams that have just lost always because we were that until last year. And so I always feel oh, I love looking, like, looking down on those poor plebes. Do you remember when we were down there I, in the slums, you guys? To be honest, no. But uh, uh, I, I, I've, I've seen artifacts uh, that sort of hint towards it, but that was a different me. I don't yeah, know. I don't like, even I know. Don't know. Sometimes when you're driving by the slums, <laughs> you see like a, a dog, you know, with like a, yeah, and I'm like, like a hoof that's kind of hurt. And you just feel bad, you know, like we wish there's I mean, I feel good. bad for them if that's yeah. what you mean. <laughs> All right, everybody's favorite part. Let's open up the Bet365 Never Ordinary app. I always love when I, we tell jokes and we're riffing off each other in votes like this. Vote's not funny or fun. Yeah, Did you not, not know that? Yeah, I did notice that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so. Uh, <laughs> I love when you do that. Don't listen to that one. Don't let that one, don't let that one get you buddy. Let Let's it. open up. the staple of the show. Yeah, Let's open I love up that the you do that one. three, six, five <laughs> app and find out what's being offered to I us do wish as Nuggets fans and betters alike. Um, the Minnesota Timberwolves are seven and a half point dogs. Wolves, if you will, at the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> That seems like a big number, man. Like seven and a half points. That's a big number. I, Are you surprised by that? I'm very surprised. I am very surprised I by that. Too. If I wasn't such a superstitious person, I would take that the Minnesota Timberwolves plus seven five because I expect the Nuggets to win a close game. But you're not Dev. Yeah, dude. I'm Dev. Here's the difference between Dev and I. Dev wins. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> yeah. the, <laughs> That's the only difference. Huh? <laughs> That's really the only difference. Okay. I just feel like it's going to be a close game. Um, so I'm not going anywhere. I hate betting points, but... To me, that's a that's a massive. We hit fifteen and a half last night. <laughs> the craziest Stupid bet of my dude. life. I know, and it was Fif- sixteen. It was sixteen. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, all right, I'll tell you where I am going. Um, I feel good about Nikola Jokic to get his over to eat, if you may, over twenty six and a half points. Brother, I have forty seven. He doesn't have the twin towers to to guard him. Nikola Jokic, um, although he might try to make you think otherwise sees this as big i know that he does i know that he's gonna uh come out and show out um he's just that guy dude he's of course he's gonna do it i also like his points rebounds and assists the number is 47 and a half it's massive for anybody else for Nikola Jokic. light work light work light work light work he's gonna make it happen um um, i also like one michael porter jr to hit his three pointers over two and a half that feels like uh I mean, this is going to be a big Mike, 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 Mike. Gotta Mike, have Mike, it, Mike. man. You gotta have it tonight. You Mike, gotta Mike, have Mike's Mike. threes. I know, Mike, Mike, Mike. Night, night, night. I just, uh, I don't feel great about what Jamal Murray is going to be facing from a defensive standpoint. So you got to find points elsewhere, and it, I think it's going to be a, a Jokic and a, and a Porter night. Um, on the other side of things, <laughs> just to channel my inner dev. I'm going to bet Anthony Edwards over two and a half threes. He seems to knock down threes with such ease when he comes to Denver, Colorado. Yeah. His stroke is like ridiculously consistent for a guy that plays like he does. Um, Coming off a 51-point game, he was dialed. Dialed. That guy is so good. I cannot wait to just absolutely hate him. Um, and I also like, and I think that this is my lock. Ah, is this my lock? I think my lock I gave out early without making any pomp about it. It's the Jokic points, rebounds, and assists. Really? But my secondary lock just because I don't know how exactly he's feeling, but he always performs against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Aaron Gordon, over 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Um, I just this is like a big it. game for AG. He's so well-rested, man. He's well-rested. He's going to come back in. I got to think that the body's feeling better than it has in some time, just for the simple matter that he has not been uh, playing. So I like him to come back with a roar into the lineup. Let's go, Nuggets. Uh, don't take that stupid Anthony Edwards bet unless you're a traitor. What do you think about... Yoke always gets rebound. That's like the one thing we always say when it's a big game, he's going to hit the board. Yeah. It's 12 and a half. What do you think there? Well, over? he's also, don't forget, fighting for that 2,000, 1,500 mark that he has no idea about. Over. <laughs> over 12 and Yeah, I think it's going to be an over. I really think it's going to be an over. We did, This is a secret we, we learned long ago about Jokic is that when the game is big, the rebounds uh, come uh, yep. because it just, if he fights for them, he gets them. That's just really how it goes. So, yeah, I love it. Do you want to know something funny? Uh, I, we were talking about end-of-year stats, record breaks. AG last year, 178 dunks. 
This year, 166. He needs 12 dunks to tie last what? year, 13 to break he's, it. He's below his dunk pace? Well, he's played pace? Well, he actually played more games. Yeah, he's below the dunk pace. Dude, what? At the start of the year, he wasn't dunking very much. Um, but he's dunked a lot since then. 12 is a lot, but I wouldn't mind him having five or six dunks tonight to make it within striking to where dude, you're like, all right. He had a, if he had a Jamal Murray type type like, man, if he had dunking the hell out of the ball. That would be incredible. Dude, I can see it. I can absolutely see it. Huge game. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, and by I'm the nervous. way, this is practice for us, too. Why? Because we go through the regular season where these games don't mean that much and you're not feeling it. And then you play a tense game and you freak out and you're like yeah. embarrassed of how you acted. Yeah. This is that night. Yeah. This is a warm up for all of us to get in shape for the playoffs <laughs> so that we learn how good- to handle our emotions. Once those playoff games, there's arrive. a good chance we're going to embarrass ourselves. Good or bad. Even if like, we're going to get way too excited, way too upset. Uh, you're right about that. Our emotions need to work out. We've been flatlining for some time. It's yeah. time to find out who we are again by going to the depths of our souls. Let's go, Nuggets. Everybody hit that like button for us. We're going to head to a very packed bar here Let's at DNBR. Go. See you on the other I'm side. I'm so nervous. <laughs>